Good afternoon and welcome. Uh, thank you so much. I'm really happy to be here at Thinking Digital again. Um, now, forgive me because I need to refer to my notes for this next bit because I normally don't realise I'm doing this. So, in a moment, I'm going to play a short bit of an arabesque by Debussy. He's an amazing impressionist composer who painted pictures with sound, but before I do that, I'm going to let you into a secret. I don't normally show this bit. Um, I'm going to show you what I do backstage to get into what I call a flow state. Um, and the reason I have to go through my notes is that I don't realise I'm doing this, OK? So I do this. basically what I do, okay? Uh, <laughs> let me explain as best I can what's going on inside my head. I'm priming all my senses to get as much input as possible. So how do I do this? I touch my hands together like this. I feel like there's electricity between my hands. I concentrate on how I'm part of a system that allows me to feel everything I need to feel in order to perform with power, with heart, and to enhance the energy exchange with the audience. You're welcome to try it right now, see if it works. It's kind of nice. Um, next, I breathe. I breathe to work out what I can smell. Now, last year, a study revealed that the human nose is capable of detecting one trillion different scents. That first cup of coffee in the morning, the new car smell, the toilets. OK, now, <laughs> it may not always smell fantastic, but for me, this step is so important. It places us in the real world so easily. Backstage in most places normally smells of wood, coffee, cleaning fluids and old material. Right, the next thing I do is drink some water. That's what water looks like. Mm. I drink water to wake up my mouth and my throat. I actually really love this feeling. It's sipping, not gulping. I imagine each molecule, molecule pouring out of the bottle and into myself and quenching my thirst. Water as fuel, filling me with power. I try not to think about the fact that each of these molecules are quite dry because there's space between them and that, that kind of messes me up a bit, so I try and avoid doing that. <laughs> OK, next up, I move my head left and right. Evening. <laughs> By moving my head left and right, I get a real sense of where everything is positioned, sound-wise. We can only see what's in front of us, really, but we can hear 360 degrees. I'm not the most visually observant person, as many of you who know me will, will know, um, so I remind myself to look everywhere with these, with my ears. And then finally, I do this. I look down and then straight ahead. It's kind of like what I call a reset, because humans can see up to 10 million different colours. Now, I imagine at this point my vision becomes clearer, brighter, crisper. Sometimes being conscious of my vision, regardless of my ability to see, is enough to feel like I can see for miles. I relax. The last thing I do is I lean forward a little. I unconsciously just put a little tension in my stomach. I engage my stomach muscles. So to carry a perfect balance between tension and relaxation is the challenge. But if you get it and you feel that all of your inputs are on ready to receive, it feels fantastic. And then, then you can perform if the pedal is in the right place, which it kind of is. There we go. So here's the irony, when I'm in this state of mind, if I get all of that right, everything disappears. My conscious awareness goes, but I've turned up the volume on all of my inputs. I try to tap into everything available to give the best performance I can. For me, performing 
is a multi-sensory experience, which is what I'm going to talk to you all about today, with the help of technology, of course. Now, to do this multi-sensory thing all the time is frankly exhausting. It's very difficult for me to turn off that multi-sensory experience I'm talking about. I have something called synesthesia, which means my senses are mixed together. I have no choice but to smell the rush hour. <laughs> but if you can experience things more deeply when you choose to, it's a fantastic way to remember things more effectively. For example, going to a firework display, it's not just about the loud bangs and the bright colours, it's the cold air. It's the warmth of the bonfire when you get near it, the crackle of wood, the smell of the fireworks and the taste of unhealthy food. <laughs> Touch, smell and sound in particular have been proven to greatly contribute to the creation of memory. And that's why I think there's something powerful here. To create in more than one modality can leave an incredible impression. Now, we don't need technology to change our perception of reality. We have a device in our head, the brain, that does it all on its own. We see patterns in things. We see shapes in clouds. We see constellations in stars. We make patterns. That's what, that's what we do. Um, but I'm going to next show you some multi-sensory experience examples that use technology and Hopefully, I want to encourage you to think and create in a multi-sensory way by the time I'm finished with you. <laughs> so example one, this is turning the mundane into art. is uh, glitching. It's a technology I made as an experiment in audio augmented reality. It takes sound from real life and highlights the patterns using real-time sound processing. And then I live compose an extra layer of music over reality. It's great fun to perform. I've done it for two people. I've done it for 80 people. It's, it's a real rush. I love that people are happy to change where they are placing their attention and play, play with the world. They drop into a world where the trains play a tune and they can join in. Example number two, using variants to increase sensory acuity. Walking through a forest is restorative because it's effortlessly fascinating. It doesn't drain our attention. There's space for everything. Think about it, there's so many sounds and colours in a forest or in nature, but they work together. And that's really difficult to create artificially. I'm sure many of you will know how difficult it is. I've tried it. Uh, this is um, building a music installation. There's 86 tracks all playing all at once. It's not impossible, but it was very, very difficult to create. That's many, many sleepless nights. Okay, the next example is interactivity. I recently worked with a company called Novalia, run by Kate Stone. She builds capacitive touch devices. This is the technology that you're looking at. And together with her and Madhu, the visual artist, we created this installation for the massive Nocturnal Wonderland Festival in Los Angeles. You make noises by touching paper flowers, stepping on those floor mandalas, and those are the flowers right there, or dipping your fingers in bowls of water. You can imagine the effect this has on festival goers. <laughs> Here's what happened at Best of All. We created an ambient forest. Watch out for Batman on the right. Um, now, it was here I realised, no matter how difficult this was to do, you know, 86 tracks or no, no one cares. Not in a bad way, just Batman doesn't care what the technology is or how complicated it was to set up. If you do it right and the technology is invisible, the experience is everything. <laughs> okay, example six, semi-conscious behaviour. Right, unlike the other examples in this clip, what you're thinking 
is literally changing your multi-sensory experience. This is a laser light show for one person controlled by your brain. It's called On Your Wavelength. It's by Rob Thomas, Marcus Lyle and Alex, whose surname I can't remember because I didn't meet him. But uh, it's an incredibly trippy experience, part of the Merge London Festival. It responds to how much you concentrate. The more you concentrate, the more you train your brain, the resulting light show rewards you with being higher and brighter and more complicated. That's if you can train your brain. So multi-sensory thinking is when it comes to creating things. You have to think about designing something memorable, unconventional, and of course, doing something more than just sound and vision, and possibly something a little strange as a bonus. Which brings me here. This being thinking digital, I can indulge my desire to do something different because I happen to know that the audience is up for something memorable, unconventional and slightly strange. So um, I have some able assistants here. We're going to go into space <laughs> and I'm going to need your help. Today I'd like to give you all a multi-sensory experience in the form of the last part of something I've written called the multi-sensory symphony. You're being handed some popping candy. Please manage, if you can, not to eat it until I eat mine. <laughs> I know it's hard because it's just before lunch. But if we all eat this at the same time, it should make an amazing noise, not just in your head, but in everybody else's world at the same time. And the plan is to give you all the impression of a meteor shower. That's the idea. <coughs> so I need to prepare my spaceship for launch over there. And if I could please have some popping candy as well so that I can help you all know when to eat it. Please feel free to give some to the crew as well. There, there should be enough for everyone. So if anyone hasn't got, oh, oh thank you. Yeah. Please just raise your hand and we've, we've got... Oh, look at that. Don't worry, I won't start without you. <laughs> this is what happens when Herb says, yeah, do what you want. <laughs> OK, sound. I'm just going to turn up my other laptop audio. Thank you very much. turn this microphone off. These are binaural headphone microphones. They should give you 3D sound. We've still got some hands up in the middle there and some hands up there. Okay. If, uh, don't worry, I will wait for you. <laughs> I'll explain these in the meantime. They've got microphones on one side and headphones on the other, which means that I can record 3D sound. So you should hopefully be able to hear some 3D effects if it's all working. <coughs> there we go. It's to get used to what it might feel like when we're in zero gravity. For example, your arms might float up in front of you because they're lighter. You can try it if you like. Just let your arms breathe in and breathe out as you drop your arms gently. Cool. OK. I think we're ready to go. Three, two, one, three, zero, 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 and lift off, lift off. Americans return to space as Discovery clears the tower.
computers now have primary control of critical vehicle functions. Discovery, go at the front up. So I hope you enjoyed our brief trip through Manchester's ground level meteor shower um, and that you consider more than just sound and vision in your next project and make that a magnificent multi-sensory experience too. Thank you very much.